Welcome back to Revelation Time. We just want to thank the Lord. Amen. Um, this week, we're going to be speaking about salvation. Because uh, the Bible specifics say, it does not matter what miracle we receive in life. Each of you may be watching right now. And you may need a miracle from God. The bills need to be paid. You may be sick. You may be going through a family crisis. Or you may be going through other adversity. But with all the blessing that we need in this life. Once we don't have salvation. Then we are a walking dead. So I'm going to be reading from John 3 verse 16 which all of us know and even when we are going to school and when we are growing up we tend to rehearse or we tend to this scripture rehearse this scripture amen and it said for god so love and we look on the word love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life now we look on the word love because many times you know we'd we'd try to emphasize on the word love itself yes i love god but the question is and i do good work if you love someone you will give because love means giving it doesn't matter we, we understand when we're in the world and you may be watching right now you would say even sometime that you you love someone but if you love someone, it is easy to say from the mouth itself. But what God wants us is to truly show from the heart that we love someone. So if you love Christ, what, are, what, what is hindering you to fully commit yourself? I understand that when we are in sin, it is difficult to break from sin. Amen. You know, many peers may say, that Christianity is boring, but I get, but that's a lie from the pit of hell, from the devil. Christianity is peace, joy, and prosperity because the only time you can find true peace is when you come to Christ. You know, when I was in the world, you know, we used to go to the beach. Amen. We used to go to the parties. We used to have fun, enough girls, or whatever, whatever. But none of those could give us any peace or any fun. Alcoholic beverage could not give us true peace. The only way you will find true peace is when you come to Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, we are blind and we are dead when we are in sin. And sin may seem nice to you. You may say you are enjoying sin. But guess what? The Bible said the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. So guess what? There is pay for everything. But the pay that you receive when you are in sin is death. And it means everlasting. Now it said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We have just seen the earthquake that take place in Japan. And there are many debates. Some is saying whether or not it was God's judgment or whatever, whatever, whatever. The thing that we need to ask, and that's the question that we need to ask right now. If there should be an earthquake or if your number, because no one know when their number will call. Are you ready for everlasting life? Or are you ready for eternal damnation. Now I'm not trying to scare you. Because it is in the word. Amen. I'm not going to say anything to you. That is not in the word of God. But the question is. Are you ready? No. You can accept. When there is an invitation. Just as how. You know normally on the Facebook. When someone. You know send you an invitation. You accept. You reject. Or you span. <laughs> Amen. But guess what. If you accept. The invitation that God is giving you right now. You're going to have eternal life. Amen. The life that you are living right now is not the end. Your life really beginning 
when you are called home. Amen. And you may be making all the plan in the world. But it doesn't matter what plan you are making. If you are making plan. And Jesus Christ is not part of your plan. None of your plan will ever succeed. But the question is. If adversity strike no. Where would you spend the rest of your life? Just think about it. You know, think about it. You may have friends and, you know, people may say all kind of stuff to you. And, and, and people may say continue to live that life. But at the end of the day, it will be you and God. At the end of the day, there is no friends. If you lost your way, will able to take you out of hell. None. Will able to take your tablet. So the choice you made, the choice you make today, whether you accept, whether you reject, or whether you spam this message, that is what the choice you make gonna allow you is either you have everlasting life, or whether or not. You're going to spend it in damnation. And many persons may say, yes, God loves us. Jesus loves us. That is why the Father allow his only begotten Son. We love our family so much. We love our children that we don't want nothing to happen. But just think about your children or anyone that you have, whether you have one, two, or three, or whatever. And you decide to use your one son as a sacrificial lamb. That it, to save me and you. Just think about that. Just think about that. If something would happen to your family, what has happened? But guess what? He give because of the love of mankind. Amen. But not because God love us. When he come back for this world, it means that God love you, that he's not going to destroy him. He's here to tell you that he love you. But guess what? If you choose that choice, none of us, you would want to go anywhere that we are not invited. Hell never made for mankind. Hell was made for the devil and his fallen angel. Amen. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into this, in the world to condemn his wor the world. But that the world through him might be saved. God don't come to condemn. The only way you will condemn. He come to give you life. To deliver you. To make. He, 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 he gone to prepare a place for us. Amen. But guess what? If God give you life and you refuse that life. That is when condemnation will come. He come to save. Will you accept? Just think about it. You know I was praying this week and the Lord said to me. Just think about you're at sea and something go wrong with your vessel and your vessel start to sink. And uh, the rescue, the nation itself, the government or whatever, the coast guard, send rescue and they send a life jacket to save you from drown. Now, when they turn up and they throw that life jacket to you, what would you do? Would you accept the life jacket? Or would you reason, intellectual reason, and all kind of reason, and say, go? Or whether or not you would say, whether or not the life jacket is real, or I have time, you know, I'm not going to drown now, you know, to be seen. What would you do? Amen? So guess what? If God sent a life jacket, which is Jesus, to you, to save you from drown, and you refuse that life jacket, because the enemy tend to tell us that we have time, what would happen? You drown, and guess what? When you drown, you'd spend it in everlasting. Now he said, You who believe on him is, will not condemn. Amen. Whosoever believe in Jesus Christ will not condemn. You'll spend everlasting life with him. But you who believe not is condemned already. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're condemned already because there's something. Should go wrong with you tonight. Where would you spend your eternal life? Now I'm glad that I'm a child of God. I used to sin. I can tell you that. And none of you that are watching right now. Would never understand the dimension of sin that I've seen. I've been there and done that. But guess what? I am glad 
that in the midst of my sin, Jesus never cut me off. It was grace and it was mercy. But suppose grace and mercy don't ex extend to you. Amen. From we born, we hear God coming. But suppose you lost your way tonight. Amen. What would happen? But grace and mercy is not something that we should take for granted. Amen. Because grace can run out. Amen. And he said, But he who believe not is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. Jesus is Lord. Amen. The only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation. The light is come to the world. Just think of God. You are in darkness. I'm just giving you a different thing. You are in a cave and you have lost no one. And God sent someone with a light to lead you out. What would you do? Would you reject that light? Would you continue to be lost? Because when you are in sin, you are in darkness. And when you are in darkness, you make wrong choice. When you are in sin, we are a fool. Amen. God can only open our eyes to see the truth. Even your very friends that is around you. The very company that is around you. Amen. You may believe that everyone is fool. But amen. Paul the apostle, he was on the road of Damascus. He thought, because he was in Judah, he see me as the truth. And he thought that Christianity was very foolish. I thought that one time also. You know, sometimes you see Christian and you say, oh, they are stupid. The pastor is at church. They don't know what to do. Amen. And guess what? When Paul was pursuing on the road of Damascus, when the light he was pursuing to kill Christian because he thought that Christian was in error and he thought to mention the name of Jesus was foolish. But on his way to Damascus, the glory of God shine and when it hit Paul in his eyes that was when his eyes opened he thought he knew the truth he realized he was blind for three days but if he was blind but guess what it was the first time in his life even his blindness physically that he see the truth his eyes was finally open and what that mean is that guess what we are blind unless God open our eyes amen doesn't matter where you, you try to reason. You know, I used to reason and I used to wonder. I used to go to church and sit at the back. Or I would just go to church for a Sunday. And, you know, go to church, sometimes you have motives. It may be someone in the church that you're attracted to. You're anointed by the devil. Amen. And I used to think that I knew it all. Amen. But when Jesus, I've never forget my experience with Jesus Christ. You know, I was sick. No doctor could help me. I pay millions trying to get healing. Amen. The doctor give me up. Amen. But when Jesus turned up. Oh Jesus. And when he opened my eyes. Not just that he healed me. But he opened my eyes to the truth. You know the first thing I said God. Forgive me because I thought. That I know the truth. You know, and I thought you could say anything. And I thought that the life that you was living, I was trying to seek peace. I party, liquor, everything. No peace. Amen. But when Jesus turned up and said, guess what? I call you. Been there and done that. For the first time in my life, I understand what the peace of Jesus is. Amen. Now the question is, when Jesus called me, suppose in sin... I lose my way. What would happen? Now God is saying it to you. You're watching right now. Because guess what? The girls may be nice. Sex may be nice. But guess what? Yeah. Jesus nicer. Amen. And with all of what you have enjoyed right now. If something go wrong with you. All the things in the world will go on. Your friends will go on. Your company will go on. Your company will go on. Only Jesus. And I've been there and done that. And I'm extending it to all my friends. So guess what? Try something. Let no one hold your back. Let not women, liquor, friends, association. Even if the devil is saying to you, say guess what? The job that you're into. If I accept Christ, then I'm going to lose everything. Yes, I've lose everything to millions. And if God strip you of anything which is ungodly, he will give you back more because he said, 
Amen. If you lose mother, if you lost mother, father, whatever he give you, he give you back a hundredfold. Full compensation that God would give you to forsake sin. He want to do something in your life right now. There is someone that is watching your name is Everton. There's someone that is watching the name is Lyde. Your name. There's someone is watching the name is Cherry. Sandra. Elizabeth. God is speaking to you right now. Michael. Mike. He's calling you right now. To walk away. There's a calling on your life from sin. He's calling you once in a life to open your eyes. You have tried everything. And nothing will bring peace to you. But Jesus Christ. Now he said, and this is the condemnation, the light is coming to the world. Refer to Jesus as the light and there is no other light. Amen. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You know, men love darkness. Amen. Men love darkness. We all love darkness because darkness is sin. And we try to feed our sinful desire. We try to cover our wicked ways because when the light shine upon you which is Christ the first thing it do it expose your wicked and sinful ways so that's why men don't like light because light will correct it will show you your flaws and it will show yourself amen it said it said it said for everyone who does evil ate light anyone that that it out against christianity it's because they love evil, which is the enemy that is bound them. And guess what? The evil, the pleasures of life, the pleasures that they have in sin. Guess what? They are afraid to let it go. Amen. For everyone who does evil, hate light. Mm -hmm. My God. Neither commit to light, lest his deed should be reproved. You are afraid of your sinful deeds and that's why you're afraid to come to jesus but he who does truth come to the light amen there is no other truth but jesus he said i am the way the truth and the light no man it doesn't matter where you try there is no other god god said in colossian that all things were created by me the very devil that you are serving is created by jesus christ through me everything the very social network Everything is created. Principalities and power. The very devil know the fallen angel Lucifer that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why do you believe he bow? He knows that he have a short time. But what Satan does is that he uses the carnality of man to deceive you. <laughs> hey, Jesus is Lord. You know, I'm glad that Jesus opened my eyes and showed me the truth. And when the light hit you, the first thing that's going to happen is that God going to convict you of the sinful things that you used to do. It is easy, not difficult. All is to say, Father, forgive me for all the sinfulness I have done. And if, you've done, if you have done anyone wrong, all it is just ask them for forgiveness. Move on and walk in the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, it said, truth must be placed in the heart of man by the Holy Spirit. And by the means of revealed word of God. Only the word of God can reveal truth. Without the word of God, it's basic instruction for us to live in this world. That his deed may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Jesus. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. Amen. Now God is saying it to you. He's pleading to some of you. Turn out. Guess what? If you're in a relationship. And your boyfriend is promised you each year that he's going to marry to you. Walk. Amen. Walk. Let no one allow you. There, there is no one that will ever go to hell and come back and say, you know, I've been to hell and back. You know, I've died, been to hell and back. Amen. And or escape. It doesn't matter how bright and intellect you are. I've never heard anyone that have the combination for hell. Anyone that escape. Hell never made for mankind. Would you go to somewhere that you're not invited? You know, people will say all kind of stuff. I'm being there. I said, we ridicule Christian. Yes, I used to do it too. 
We said Jesus is not really his God. You know, it's the Duito. Amen. But guess what? Have you ever in pain? Or have, you ever, have you ever in a situation where no one can help you? Amen. So guess what? Never in a situation where you say, if I know. I've never forget when Jesus called me. I remember he gave me a revelation one time. Of what heaven is like. And it's one of the most beautiful places that you can ever imagine. Amen. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, you have many critics or whatever. But guess what? Never allow people to try to, 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 to influence your decision. When people influence your decision and when you're in trouble, whether it be business or anything. Normally they will turn their back on you. But would you allow someone to influence your decision that if something should go wrong. Because God is the one that has your life in his hand. And if Jesus Christ decides right now that he's not going to cover you and something goes wrong, what happened? What's going to happen? Are you going to broke out of hell? Or are you going to go down there and tell the very devil that is speaking to you? The devil that bound you into your sinful ways, the very devil is going to say, <laughs> who tell you to come down here? <laughs> you see, it's a listener. I'm pleading to you right now. No, I'm going to look at Mark. Mark, Luke, sorry, I'm going to look at Luke 12, verse 16 to 21. Luke 12. Amen. Just turn your Bible to Luke 12, verse 16 to 21. It speaks about the rich fool. And, uh, you know, uh, many times I heard people use the term fool is a fool. But if you read the Bible carefully, you realize that he said a fool in their heart said there is no God. So fool is really a person who don't believe in God. Amen. He said, and he spoke a parable unto them saying, the ground of a certain rich man bought forth plenty. Amen. And he thought within himself saying that shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. This is a rich man. He was prospering. Everything was going well within his organization. And instantly, he started to think, no, you know, he started to put operational plan or a strategic plan in place in terms of expansion, you know, what he's going to be doing or what he's going to be doing. Many of you have plans. You're planning for 2012 or you're planning for the end of the year what's going to happen. But is God in your plan? And he said... This will I do. I will pull down my barn and build greater. So he was planning to, for expansion. Amen. And there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. Amen. He was mean to use this fruit for the glory of God. Amen. You, you, amen. Which was to make the gospel to the world. But instead he did the opposite. He the, this expansion that he was planning to do was not for the glory of God. It was, he wanted to expand for himself individually in terms of what he wanted to accomplish. And I say to my soul, soul, you have much good laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, he was planning all the pretty this and that, you know, that he's going to be doing unto him. You fool. <laughs> what God is saying is you fool. Whatever plans you have, you're, you're foolish if Jesus Christ is not in your plan. This night your soul shall require of you. Then who shall those things be which you have provided? Amen. So he who laid up treasure for himself is not rich toward God. So guess what? Ensure that whatever treasure that you are laid up, you're laid, laid up in heaven. Don't be rich within the world or trying to get riches in the world. But you are poor in the things of God. Ensure that whatever plans that you are planning for your life or your organization, that Jesus is part of your plan. Because it not necessarily mean that you will, you will end up benefit what you are planning. Ensure that Jesus is a part of your plan. Now turn your Bible to, we are still at Luke 12, verse 39 to 40. Let's look in. Jesus is speaking to you right now. He speak about the good man of the house. And this known that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered 
his house to be broken through. Now, a lot of you may be watching right now. And I know that there's some time in your life you have suffered loss. You know, thief come and break your house and you didn't catch him. You're gone with your stuff and you're hungry. Amen. It is the same way. Jesus Christ is saying he's coming back. If we know that a thief would come into our house, we'd set up some form of security. You know, to catch her, we try to ambush that thief. But guess what? No one knows when Jesus is coming back. You never know when Jesus is coming back. You never know when he require of your soul. Amen. And he said, he said, but you therefore ready also for the Son of Man come at an hour when you think not. None of us know, not even Jesus in heaven know when the Father is coming back for his earth. When he says, son, go and get your children. Because Jesus loves us so much that possible that he would say to us that he's coming. He shows a sign in the Bible. He said when there is earthquake in diverse places, war and rumors of war, kingdom against kingdom, cosmic problem, you know, the, the excessive heat, it is signs he gives us a clue that we must look up. Amen. No, 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 no. He give us a sign, but none of us know God could come tomorrow. Amen. When is the day or the hour? Let no man deceive you that Jesus is coming next week or is coming tonight. He can come anytime in the next minute. He can come while you're listening to this message. But guess what? When Jesus come, would you be ready? Because no one know. Amen. He has some people in you know, So let her enjoy sins. As much as possible. Because I'm not ready. But suppose God catch you off guard. Amen. Suppose something would go wrong in your life. Suppose the enemy come right now and take your life. Are you ready? Do you ready to meet the king? Do you ready? Let no one tell you anything. Don't, you know, we, we, they, they, they are different media, different people, different individual that is anointed by Satan. That will use philosophy. And logic and different mindset to try to reason that Jesus Christ did not come. Yes, he come. The very devil knows that he come. He come to the Virgin Mary. He die. He carried the cross and he resurrect for mankind that no more blood. Animal blood could be shed for mankind. But because it's blood. That is why I'm saying to you. You are there right now. That is why. No, it's coming back. Not the loving Jesus. He's coming back. But he's coming back as a judge. To judge every mankind. The question right now. If an earthquake shake right now. Or any form of disaster. And you have lost. Where are you going? Eh? Where are you going? Where are you going? That's the question. Jesus is saying to you now. Now he said, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. Seek what it costs a man to gain the whole world and lose their soul. It doesn't matter what honor, what accolade, amen, what, what you have gained in this earthly realm. It doesn't matter. The honor or the honorable. Can you imagine if you lost your way? Mm? You're going to go to a place with the devil. You're going to burn. You think when you're going to hell, you can go there and say, yes, sir, I'm the president. I'm the prime minister. I'm the best lawyer. I'm the most intellectual person. Think again. You are going down there as a last soul to burn in damnation. That is what the Bible said. I'm not going to tell you something that is not in the word. It is in the word. That is what the word said. No, we're going to be looking right now at Luke 16 right now. We give God thanks. We give God praise. Luke 16. It speaks about divies. Amen. And uh, you know, this is what the Holy Spirit just said to tell you. Many of you are watching right now. You are listening right now. And many of you said, well, is man write the Bible? Of course, the Bible is, is inspired by man, God. You know, inspire man, the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't understand. Because if you're not saved, you don't understand spiritual things. The Bible said a natural man do not understand the spiritual thing. You can't even speak about spiritual things. You can't even understand the Bible. Unless the Holy Spirit open your eyes what the Bible needs. Because the natural man do not understand the spiritual thing. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. 
Amen. So, you know, from time to time we hear that um, is man write the Bible and his Bible is not truth. Well, I here to tell you, I know the Bible is truth. Amen. Because any name, and I know Jesus is truth, you use. Amen. And no, it could be Selassie. It could be any name. But when you speak Jesus, the devil tremble. Amen. He's, that's how powerful the name Jesus is. Now, in Divis, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. And he fear every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. This man was rich. Amen. Powerful within the city. Amen. He has all the favor of God as on his life. His riches was given by God himself. Amen. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Lazarus was poor. He was a beggar. Amen. Which was laid at the gate full of sores. You know, you know, in, in this dispensation, they would look on Lazarus and say it's curse. We give God thanks, we give God praise. This rich man of everything at his desire is he has made it. Amen. But this rich man is cursed. I understand sometimes when Christian is going through stuff, people will tell you that your God is not doing anything. But guess what? I'm speaking to every Christian that are watching right now. The greatest things in life is to ensure that we make it into heaven. Amen. I know earthly things is good. We need money. But guess what? After a while, money will mean nothing to us. Amen. Money. Because there are certain things that money cannot buy. Money cannot buy salvation. And I'm saying to you, your money will be nothing if you lost your way. Amen. Now, Lazarus was poor. Amen. As the scripture said. Some people say it was cursed, sitting at the rich man, eating crumbs, and designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. My God, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sore. My God, this man was in poverty. Nothing was happening for this man. But it came to pass that the beggar died. The poor, cursed man died, beggar, and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. Amen. Royalty. He gone into paradise in royalty. The rich man died also and was buried. Everything. Hmm. No angel carried him away when he died. He gone to hell. Amen. And in hell, he lift up his eyes. Because some people believe that when you die, you're just gone. Now when you die, you just start because your soul is there. That's the beginning. You're going to remember everything. You're going to remember this message. You're going to remember when you, you, you laugh after Christian. You laugh after the message. You criticize. You say all kind of stuff. <laughs> Amen. You're going to remember everything. I'm saying it to you. You're going to remember. No angel carry him away. And in hell he lift up his eyes. My God. Can you imagine everything come back to him? He was in hell now. At the time. He was in torment. He was tormented right now. And see it Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. My God. I'm going to say, I'm going to remember his riches, everything. Lazarus that was sitting at his door, he's in hell. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Too late. Too late. And he sent Lazarus. He said, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. To cool my the tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime receive your good things. And likewise, Lazarus evil things you know, in the world. But now is comfort. And you are tormented. Amen. Now question. Which is better? Do you want to comfort it or do you want to torment? Because you can't bring your house. All the natural things that you're enjoying right now, you can't. It's just a hurt and it, it will wipe away. It will be destroyed in an inch. But the, but the question, if God should call you, are you ready? Now I'm saying to you, don't allow your girlfriend, don't allow friends, don't allow money, don't allow work. No allow the devil 
to allow you to walk lost your way. I want to pray for you right now. Don't allow this message. We are not crazy. Amen. Bible says, compel them. Compel them. Compel them. You don't want to know what hell is. All of us, none of us were created by God to go to hell. Now I'm saying to you, Jesus is saying to you, it is time for you to come home. It is time for you to walk away from sin. It is easy. Just repeat after me. He said, Father, in the name of Jesus, he's speaking to you. I come to you right now. Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive my sin. Help me, Lord. Turn my life over. Wash me with the precious blood. Don't allow me, Lord, to be swept away in sin. I come to you right now. Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. I want you to come into my life. Heal, deliver, and set me free. Help me to walk each day. I'm saying to you, it's not going to be easy. When you become a Christian, there's going to be temptation. The whole man is not something that go overnight. But the Holy Spirit who is the comforter. He will cleanse you. He will speak to you. Temptation going to come because you are in the flesh. But when temptation comes, your past life going to come back and want to haunt you. The Holy Spirit will instruct you. And he will lead you into the path of righteousness and holiness. Will you make that choice today? Because the choice we make in life is what allows us to prosper. Will you, will you, that's the question of the Lord, accept this invitation? Will you reject or will you spam? Which one? Jesus is saying to you, because tomorrow promise to no man. And I'm praying right now, and as you accept the Lord, you want to heal. There's a, a Derek. I said, the Lord, drying up cancer cell right now. Man, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the is drying up tuberculosis. Hallelujah. HIV is being dried up. Leukemia is being dried up because you accept him. Amen. Cancer is being dried up. Kidney problem, heart problem, receive your healing right now. Receive. You're, you may be watching from an hospital on your computer. Just lay on right now. Wherever you, you have problem and say, Jesus, heal me. You are the healer. You said by the stripe we are healed. The 39 stripe you take on the cross. The blood of Jesus is what he has given his life that we may have life. We thank you, Lord, for this message. Do not turn him away today. Do not turn him away. I'm begging you. Do not turn him away. Do not. This may be a last chance. No one know when he's coming back. No one. There's no repentance in the grave. Will you accept him? Or will you reject him? Or will you spam? And we thank you in Jesus' name. Right now that you are listening, we thank you. Even as you sleep tonight, every word from this message will play back in your spirit and that you will turn over. We thank you, Lord. We bless and highly favor and peace that passeth all understanding. If I can be saved, Jesus save me. You can do it. If I can accept Jesus, you can do it. You, can, you need to know my testimony. Amen. You need to know if I can accept Jesus, you can. Because I was like Paul on the road of Damascus. Accept him today. Accept him. Accept life. Do not turn him away. Yes, do not turn him away. There's a John you're watching right now. Don't turn him away. Don't turn him away. Call for prayer. 954-237-5058. Or you will see the information. Email us for prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are covered and you are blessed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Peace.